It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Carolina Panthers. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. Just a spectacular afternoon for football here in the Tar Heel State of North Carolina as EA Sports welcomes you inside Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Carolina Panthers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. As CD folks are excited here in Carolina. They have been since March 10th. That being the day that the Panthers traded up with the Bears for the right to select Alabama's Bryce Young first overall. And selected first overall, they did. And not only that, during the free agent period, the rest of the draft, they also tried to surround this young quarterback with extra talent, trying to get him activated early so he can be a starter from day one. But meanwhile, for the Houston Texans, the future is now. They take C.J. Stroud out of Ohio State, number two overall, and we will see him get the nod as starter in this one. <laughs> you and I laugh privately often when teams say, well, we want him to sit and learn. Come on, if you take him that high, play him right away, go ahead and get him started, and we'll see him do exactly that in this one. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And off we go from Uptown Charlotte. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Panthers set to take over for the first time. And Charles will get a look at the much-heralded rookie, Bryce Young, the first overall pick from April's draft. Bryce Young, the quarterback out of Alabama with a Heisman Trophy in his hip pocket, is the new face of Carolina football. 80 touchdowns, just 12 picks in his college career for the Crimson Tide. He may be a little small in terms of size, but potential, massive. And this is going to be a Panthers first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Another run here with Sanders to about the 35, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. It's a second down run with Sanders. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Young on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They're just going to run a drive route here with their tight end. Let him get up field about 10 yards and then move toward the middle of the field. This ball is right on target and it results in a first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 39-yard line. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Meanwhile, the throw by Young was knocked away and incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. 
Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Young. And that will be incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards, first down. Well, so much for being backed up against their goal line to start the drive. He gave him some breathing room and then some. I think the defense really got caught thinking safety, trying to stack the line of scrimmage. And oftentimes, if you can get past the initial grouping, there's a lot of room to run. The defense actually fortunate that didn't go farther. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods and brought down, but not before reaching the 25. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Play action. Here's Stroud. This is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's second and 10. Pierce now up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. We'll get a pause here. There appears to be a Panther who was shaken up on that last play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Oh, it's complete. A diving grab there by Brown. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. I know that rookie quarterbacks have to earn veteran receivers' trust. Maybe we saw that on that play with that type of effort, huh? Yeah, helping out the rook with a heck of a catch. First and 10, it's Pierce. Down to about the 32. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second and seven. Now Stroud. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Stroud. That is caught. And they're going to have another first down. 
as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 17-yard line. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. Well, this is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool. He looks calm. He looks collected in marching them down the field. And, Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But, you know, they've thrown the football so much at a younger level now way more so than what we saw when guys came into the league when you and I came through. And also just the way in particular to him, Charles, how he handles himself in meetings, just so professional, mature. Looks like he's been in the league five years. Yeah, he cares about the game. He cares about his performance, and it's showing. Now a second and ten. Throwing now is Stroud. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Stroud looking to throw. Adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that. But let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Fairbair now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And he cannot get away, and Young will go down. Christian Harris there, finding his way home to record the sack. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. To throw on second down is Young. Throw left side caught by the tight end, Hurst. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Here is third down and four. Now Young. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have the Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you can actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Running right, here's Sanders. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. They'll go again with Sanders. And he's gonna pull his way forward to the 48. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on 
first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Third and short yardage, Young. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. So give him two yards there on the completion. And it'll be fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Now that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, you hate that defensively. They had him pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on and that's gonna get called every time. So a big penalty there on the face mask leads to first and 10. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Second and nine from the 44. Now a handoff for Pierce. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. 46 yards rushing for him now to this point. We are watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. Two yards still to go. Third down now. And Stroud now to throw. Caught left side. Here's Dell. And he is going to have a Texans first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The clock running here, under a minute to go now in the first quarter of a 3-0 game. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down, stopped at the Panthers 36. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two, as they've got it with a first and ten. Here's Stroud. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Jordan. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion results there in nine yards. 
And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Stroud to throw it. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. Darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. On the bootleg, Stroud. Here's a diving catch right side. Defense was thinking run and their delta pass of just under 20 yards. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Pierce, is into the end zone, touchdown Houston. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A 10 play drive that time. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Now Raheem Blackshear going to take this one out. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Panthers now set to take over offensively. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. Throwing, Young. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. And this may be the one to build on right here. It's the second quarter. They've got nothing on the scoreboard as of yet. They need to put something together, and this is a good start as they get the completion there for good yardage and a first down. Here's Sanders. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Another run with Sanders. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. Nice run from Sanders who accomplished a couple of long-awaited firsts last season in Philadelphia. Finally broke 1,000 yards and had 11 touchdowns to help reach his first Pro Bowl. A give running left, it's Sanders down to about the 45. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and seven. Now here's Young. Short throw underneath to Hurst. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 
He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and three. Shotgun snap and then the give to Sanders. Give him a yard on the run there and that's gonna set up a third down and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. They'll run with Sanders up the middle, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. A free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? Second down, Young. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. On the draw, here's Sanders. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. So Young will head to the sideline, and on is Pinheiro for the Panther field goal. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD. And it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them, that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Yeah. 
Pierce gets this one running right. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second down and six now. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Third and two. In motion right, that's Collins. On third down, here's Pierce. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 92 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a 1,000-yard campaign last year and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth-round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. First and 10, it's Stroud. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in the spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. On second down, it's Stroud. This one left side caught by Collins. And he gets this inside the 10 to the 9. It's also a gain of 9. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's done a lot of foul right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Stroud off the play fake. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Here goes Stroud again. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. C.J. Stroud, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Texans have taken a two-touchdown lead now. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead is now So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And 
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. They'll look to throw. And connecting here with DJ Shark. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Good work after the catch. Going to net them 23 and a first. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Young going to get this complete. Meanwhile, the Sanders. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. 55 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. This second and four. Young to throw it. There's Tremble, the tight end. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And now it's third and three. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Young. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. This is up and good from Pinheiro. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17-6. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. Oh, a good looking return set up here. Houston's offense already at the line set to get going. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. 
All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw Damian Pierce put together a strong performance in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. They'll come up now, third and three. Play action, Stroud now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're gonna have this across midfield and inside the 45. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, Make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. That'll be pulled in downfield by Collins. And he's going to get this down near the 25. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. On second down, here's Pierce. Ooh, the juke. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 111 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. They'll run here with Pierce. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal.
Stroud looking to throw. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Back to throw. Here's Stroud. The quick slant caught. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off from the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get involved in the end zone. I hope they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second and nine. Another run here with Sanders, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Now he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Give him 18, it's a Carolina first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw, Young. Sharks got it, left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. Second down, back to Sanders. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. On the counter now, it's Sanders. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. 
Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Rush coming, and he's taken down. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. All about the offense so far this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Carolina. DJ Chark, 41 yards. And the Panthers are back within a score. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. you probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, He's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side. And all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Stroud on third down now. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Cowboy Crozier Hill getting in there and taking him down. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Here's Cameron Johnston now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A 45-yard punt for there on the return. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. Look at DJ Chark as he and the rest of the offense head back out. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Man, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. You get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Second and a couple. They'll go again with Sanders. Dances by him. And a good run here as he'll run the way down to the 40 yard line. Give him 15 there, and the Panthers have a first down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. 
Up the middle they go with Sanders. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. They'll run. It's Sanders. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. From the 17, here's second and four. They'll run with Sanders. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? They'll run with Sanders. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a gain of five on the play, and it'll also be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and goal from the one. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Third and goal, and keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Sanders. touchdown run. setting up for a great finish all tied in the fourth as the kicks away from a yard or two deep here comes a return and in hindsight probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16 yard line the Texans offense now they get set to head back onto the field well they just gave up the score to tie it that's the bad news the good news plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage. But you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Stroud now on second down. Throw left side complete. That's Collins. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. The Carolina offense about ready to go. The fumble recovery certainly has put them in the driver's seat. First and ten, all tied here in the fourth. Shotgun snap and then the give to Sanders. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Second down, back to Sanders. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. The Panthers on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and four. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. They try to finish off this drive with six points. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. A field goal could get them the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Young off the bootleg. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Adam Thielen from three yards out. And the Panthers have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here on the fourth. Obviously a huge touchdown for their team, but a big touchdown for a rookie quarterback here to be able to break the tie in the fourth quarter. And he just shook off all the pressure, too, because when you think about it, tie ball game, rookie quarterback, most of them are thinking, don't make a mistake. Instead, this young man just said, I'll make a play. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And this taken in at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. And Stroud now to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. He'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Partner, I like the play call coming right after a tackle for a loss because... This is an obvious passing situation, but instead they pulled them a little bit with the screen, and they wound up getting back what they lost, and then a little bit more. Third and four. Stroud to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he is going to have a Texans first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. If you're a coach, 
You'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Now Stroud. That is incomplete. I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch victory. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. They go again with Pierce. And he'll push his way through. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. From the 34-yard line, here's second down and three. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he'll go down at the 28. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Pierce now up the middle. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive. Two for two. Stroud sets up the play action. And that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third. And now they deal with fourth down. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down. And he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning in touchdowns. So this game is flipped. They were down. Now they're up with a football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach up and the coordinator? Because they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack? Or do you dial it back a little bit to try and protect this lead? Well, my cop-out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right. But I do think if they can stay aggressive and keep them on their heels, they'll be best served that way. 
Second down, back to Sanders. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Panthers have the first. It's a gain of 12. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Young. He's got Mingo. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. I just love that we're going about trying to finish off this game. This is not an offense. It's going to go into a shell. They're going to keep exploiting weaknesses when they see it. And that's a huge pickup there with the game in the balance. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Young to throw. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and that'll make this a seven-point game. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Kick it away is Pinheiro. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So Stroud and the Texans down by seven. Just over a minute, 40 to play. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. Here's Stroud toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really start to finish. Man, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Stroud to throw it. And that's complete to Brown. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one, got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. 
Well, this crowd doing their best to make a lot of racket. It's third and five. Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. The throw over the middle, taken in. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. This is first and ten. Now Stroud. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. They'll come up now. This is second and long. To throw is Stroud. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. One final shot for C.J. Stroud. He's going to let it fly. And this is caught inside the five. What a thrilling fourth quarter this one was. Well, at least, I guess, if you're cheering for the winning side. An, outst an outstanding comeback, though, that saw them completely take control and change the outcome of this game. Yeah, I'm not sure how many of us saw that coming, the way that they were playing and having the lead after three quarters. A little bit of a stunning ending because it wasn't just a one-touchdown swing. It was a multiple-touchdown swing for them.